Should you use biochar in your worm bin to boost microbial activity and get higher quality worm castings? We'll get to that on today's episode of Coffee and Compost. My name is Steve Churchill, this is The Urban Worm Company. Every now and then a reader or YouTube subscriber will ask if they should be using biochar in their worm bins. Now, if you're not aware what biochar is, it's a type of soil amendment made from organic matter that's been partially combusted in an oxygen starved, high temperature environment. This process known as pyrolysis can turn wood, manure, and other plant-based agricultural residue into a soil amendment that is well over 90% carbon. And we've got a great intro to biochar blog post on our website, so check the video description for a link to that. Biochar has two characteristics which make it a really interesting soil amendment. It's got a negative charge which is important for gardening and a honeycomb-like structure with tons of nooks and crannies that give it an absolutely immense amount of surface area. These nooks and crannies act like a protective coral reef for microbes and that's what makes biochar really interesting for both gardeners and vermicomposters. Now I know talking about positive and negative charges sounds boring as hell but I need you to hang with me. It's actually pretty wild how biochar's negative charge can affect soil. So opposites attract, right? Well most nutrients in the soil are going to have a positive charge so they are ready to form what I'm just gonna call a semi-committed relationship with negatively charged things like biochar. Biochar acts like a nutrient sponge and pulls these nutrients into it. Okay, so far so good. But this means those nutrients already have a dance partner and they really don't care to be taken up by plants. They're kind of happy with the biochar. But, and this is where it gets kind of interesting, when a plant needs nutrients, it eats up some of its own carbohydrates and releases carbon dioxide into the soil. When that carbon dioxide comes into contact with water, it turns into a positively charged carbonic acid, which now looks for a negatively charged dance partner like biochar. Remember that part about biochar and nutrients being semi-committed? Well, that biochar is more than happy to form a new relationship with another positively charged cation like carbonic acid. It just doesn't care. So once the carbonic acid shows up, the biochar will release nutrients back into the soil the same way that Leo DiCaprio releases women once they turn 25. This capacity for promiscuity is good for your soil and is called cation exchange capacity or CEC. In short, high CEC soils can store more nutrients than low CEC soils and biochar increases your soil's cation exchange capacity. All right guys, if you're liking this video and want me to make more of them, please like the video, hit subscribe, and click that little bell to let you know every time we release a new video. All right, back to the topic. But when it comes to the worm bin, it's the incredible habitat for microbes that makes biochar so interesting when it comes to decomposing organic waste, which is done initially by bacteria, which will colonize that biochar. Here's a stat that's gonna blow your mind. A single gram of high quality biochar, which is about this much, has the same surface area as two full-size basketball courts. In other words, that gram of biochar has around 9,400 square feet of surface area, thanks to all those microscopic nooks and crannies. So why do we really care about this? Well, it's because because what we're really trying to do on our worm bin is give microbes a habitat where they can work alongside worms to break down organic waste. And what better way to help bacteria proliferate than by giving them an awesome place to live? This is why uh, an expert that I know about biochar calls biochar the Manhattan of microbes. It's like this giant condominium complex where microbes can live in very, very dense populations. Now, I think biochar is an interesting addition to your worm bin and not just because of the habitat for microbes. If you're using biochar with very small particle size, then it can also serve as a grit for your worms to aid in digestion. As you know, the worms don't really have teeth. They use grit inside their guts to help grind food waste down to make it uh, be digested and fragmented more easily. Now, I've also heard great things about using biochar with regular composting too. Hot composting, just like vermicomposting, requires the proliferation of microbes. In the case of hot composting, it's heat-loving or thermophilic microbes. When I attended the U.S. Compost Council Conference in 2019, I heard from an expert that the addition of biochar to compost helps increase the amount of time that compost stays at elevated temperatures, what he calls hang time in compost. So for those of you who are gardeners, you're going to want to hear this. Raw biochar can actually produce negative effects in your garden for a couple growing seasons because it soaks up the available nutrients in your soil depriving the plants of some of the nutrients they need. But when biochar goes through the vermicomposting process, it can soak up trace amounts of nutrients in a process called charging. So the biochar present in your harvested worm casting should have plenty of nutrients and microbes. Another cool thing about using biochar in your worm bin is it actually gets more concentrated during the vermicomposting process. Just like composting, whatever your vermicomposting gets reduced in volume as it breaks down. You're gonna have less volume reduction with vermicomposting than you're gonna have with composting, but the principle remains. Most of 
of its volume was burnt away during the pyrolysis process, leaving the remaining carbon structure, which isn't going to break down anymore. So let's say your biochar comprises 5% of your vermicompost in the beginning. If your vermicompost reduces in volume by 50%, you've actually increased your biochar percentage up to 10% in your harvested worm castings. So if you're convinced that you want to try biochar, here's how I'd do it. And get some biochar from us using this link above my left shoulder or the link in the video description below. When you do your next feeding, make sure to add two parts bedding to one part food waste and then mix in biochar at a 5% volume. For example, if you're feeding one quart food waste, add two quarts of bedding and add about a half a cup of biochar. I would mix us all together and layer it into my urban worm bag or other bin. If you just want a biochar infused worm castings, you can get that from us as well. And we're launching a new blended product that combines our organically approved worm castings with biochar in a 50-50 blend. And you'll see that link in the description below as well. Now you may be wondering if I use biochar in my urban worm bag. The answer is no, but that's mostly because I'm a lazy vermicomposter. Measuring my feedings precisely and remembering to mix in biochar just isn't something I have the discipline to do. And I'm also not an avid gardener, so the quality of the end product in my own worm bin isn't as important as being able to recycle my own food waste. So if you're wondering whether you should be using biochar in your worm bin, let me say this. You can have a great worm bin without ever touching biochar. And if you're happy with the results you get and you just don't have any desire to make your vermicomposting more difficult, then I don't know if there's any real reason to change things up. But if you're a tinkerer and enjoy messing around with different additions to your worm bin to see what happens, then I think biochar is a really natural next step. The amazing capacity to house microbes is reason enough to give it a go. All right, that's it. We're going to see you on the next video.